Five Podcast. I'm your host, Gus Cousins, along with my new co-host this week, Tamoki Graham. Yep. Filling in for our other co-host, Ben Jordan, who decided to take off to BC over the holiday- holidays and enjoy the uh, the rain out there with the family. Well, it's warmer, too. It is warmer, but uh, he'll be back next week, and hopefully full head of steam, he'll jump right back in and keep going. But for this week, we got the administrator, Tamoki Graham, in here, so that should be fun. Uh, Not a whole lot going on in the sports world this week, mainly because, you know, it was Christmas and all that, so Merry Christmas to everyone. Hopefully everyone had a good uh, good couple days. And happy holidays. And happy holidays. There you go. There we go. Uh, Yeah, so as I said, not much going on, but the Blue Jays finally made a big splash in free agency, and we'll talk to you about that a bit. Oh, it was so good. Yeah. 11.30 at night. Oh, yeah. Drama and everything. I'm sure he's asleep in South Korea when everything was going down. Oh, yeah. but So that was great. We're excited about that. We'll talk to you about that in a little bit. But just to run through the very few other notes around uh, the different leagues. Uh, In the NFL, we're coming down to week 17, the final week before the playoffs. Uh, The Titans and the Steelers and the Raiders are really all uh, battling for the final wildcard spot in AFC. The Raiders probably won't make it, but it's going to be down to the Titans and Steelers. Those are two, uh, two teams and two games that you should watch for this weekend. And the uh, garbage division of the Eagles and the Cowboys still has yet to be decided. So that should be interesting for some folks at least. But man, what a shitty division that is. Uh, In the NHL, um, the outdoor game on January 1st, the Cotton Bowl is coming up. Uh, which will be the Predators versus the Dallas Stars in Dallas, Texas. So why is it called the Cotton Bowl? Uh, because the stadium is called the Cotton Bowl. It's a football a stadium. Terrible name. It's called the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. A lot of people are making money off of it. I don't know. Uh, and then the World Junior started up on Boxing Day, so a couple scores just to run along. Uh, the Czech Republic upset the Russians 4-3 on the first day, along with Canada beating the USA in a thriller of a game. Uh, they were down to 0 0- 0-2 originally, came back to take a 4-2 lead, then blew that in the third period before scoring a, a goal, Alexi Lafreniere, with a few minutes left to make it uh, 5-4, and then an empty net goal by Ty DeLandre, who almost screwed up the game uh, with a delay of game penalty. So that was a good game to watch. The Swiss beat Kazakhstan 5-3, no surprise Is, there. Is uh, Kazakhstan a big hockey presence, or what? why are they even in this thing? Uh, actually, yeah, they they never win anything, but they're always good enough to be there. Like they dominate their their minor pool yeah. and like go undefeated, and that's how they keep finding their way in here. Similar with uh, Germany, although they've had guys like Mort Sider recently who have stepped up and are starting to become bigger presences even in the NHL. Uh, the Swiss beat Kazakhstan five three, as I said. Sweden uh, beat Finland three two in overtime. That was a great game back and forth the entire time. And then uh, Slovakia beat Kazakhstan this morning 3-1, so Kazakhstan is pretty much out now, but they're always going to be back in, I would say, because they're always good enough to make it there, they're just never good enough to make it very far. And uh, the Germans play uh, the Americans at 1 p.m. today. That should be a good game, I would think. Uh, Even though the Americans are 0-1, I would expect um, pretty much the USA to wipe the floor with the Germans, but you never really know in these tournaments. And uh, Taylor Hall scored his first goal as a Coyote. Uh, last week we mentioned about the trade, how he got traded from New Jersey to Arizona, and then it took a couple games, but he finally put up a couple points here and there, so that's good starting to pay off for them, and then in the NBA, uh, the Raptors had a great start to the week, and a really terrible end to the week, they had a 30 point comeback against the Mavs, they were down 85-55 with about 3 minutes to go in the third quarter, came back to win 110-107, brilliant game, then they shit the bed the next two games against the Pacers and the Celtics, on Christmas, no less. That's disappointing. Brutal watch. And whoever the hell decided to wear black jerseys on Christmas in Toronto when the Celtics wore green and the Raptors' main colors red <laughs> should be fired immediately. Do people even go to that game like live? Because I feel like yeah, Christmas it was, is like, is it sold out? Yeah, it was sold out. Oh. Was all, all the games. Uh, the Warriors and the Rockets game. The Warriors somehow beat the Rockets. I believe that was a sellout. All these, all the Lakers game, they have a bunch of big games on Christmas Day set up for viewing because everybody likes watching that. But man, who the, why would you not have a green jersey and a red jersey? It makes no sense to me. A black, like what, I don't know if that was their OVO version one or whatever it was or city, city version, but what the hell was that? And uh, forgetting that, 0-2 in their last two games, started off, got the first 10 points against the Celtics and then they just went right down here, right downhill real quick. Easy for me to say. 
And uh, so they lose that one. They'll have a chance to rebound against Boston again on Saturday, this time in Boston. So a rematch there. Hopefully Toronto can bounce back. And that's about it for the NFL, NHL, and NBA. As I said, not a whole lot going on. Very slow week. So getting on. It's my favorite part because it's the only sport I know about. The MLB. Yep. The Blue Jays signed a big free agent. Holy Which shit. Incredible. I mean, it seems like every offseason they just kind of do nothing and just sit on their ass. But now we got Hyunjin Ryu. Big time. Four years, $80 million. What's that? The third biggest contract and uh, third biggest signing in Blue Jays history. Oh, yeah. Uh, Led the league uh, in ERA, National League in ERA uh, last and, uh, year. American League, didn't he? Oh, did he? I think so. Oh, even uh, better. I don't know. Uh, anyways, he has a career 3.32 FIP, which is fielding independent pitching. It's very good. That's pretty uh, impressive. Yeah, when he's on, he's really on. Oh, yeah. If, if he's uh, not injured, he's incredible. And that's a huge signing because we need an ace. We need an ace. And no, he'll step have... right in there and fill those yeah. shoes for the next four years. And uh, that also means big Korean media presence in Toronto. Yeah, so they, the Blue Jays apparently are going to be broadcasting, or Korea will be broadcasting, Blue Jays, every Blue Jays game in Korea uh, with translations and all that. But I think that's insane. Yeah, well, that means Rogers is just going to make a ton more money, which means hopefully they'll uh, sign you know a few more guys here and there, which will be... Nice to watch. And if it's know. true, that's a lot of money. That's yeah. like a cost both ways. Like Toronto is obviously going to get a lot of attention, a lot of attention over there because of Punch and Ryu now. But man, that was that's going to be a big international deal between those two places. It's just, oh, yeah. I, I'm sure other teams do it. Like I'm, Tanaka in Japan, right? Yeah. I'm sure they've done that there before. But I don't know if they've broadcasted every single Yankees game. Yeah, I don't know. And like career, uh, career seems to love. They love Ryu for some oh, reason. Oh, yeah. He's been in a K-pop video I've seen. And... Oh, really? Yeah. So that's... Oh, uh, I did not know that. That's him. And uh, I heard news that the Angels didn't want to sign him because they didn't want starters from two different Asian markets, which is so stupid because the Angels need a, uh, a starting pitcher, a good starting rotation. And they decided not to sign Ryu because wow. they already have Otani, who's Japanese. What the is... hell? I mean, that's ridiculous. That like, is ridiculous. On. That's the first I'm hearing about it. That's insane to me. Yeah. Like, you got Otani, who's had arm issues, albeit like minor ones up until last year, and then yeah. he went through the surgery. But then they got Julio Tehran. Yeah. Which is a. He walks everybody. Walks a lot of people. He eats innings, but he walks a lot. Andrew Heaney. There's three. Yeah. Felix Pena. Jaime Beria. Like, I don't. You're yeah. really okay. going deep on the depth chart there. I think that's insane. And I mean, why would you not take. He's marketable. Just like they had Japan Day in the in Angel Stadium last year, you can probably have Korea Day, and there's a big uh, Korean uh, population in Los Angeles. So. Oh yeah, LA big market too, right? Yeah. Like forget it. Like it's he would have been going from one LA team, LA team to another LA team. Exactly. Create. I don't know. That maybe would create a rivalry game. Maybe. Yeah. Hell, have Kershaw go up against Ryu. I don't <laughs> even know if they play each other next year, but they might. Yeah. That'd be interesting to watch. The Jays aren't going to start a rivalry rivalry with the Dodgers. No, they, ne- never. They're like total opposites. Yeah. And uh, it was also reported that the Blue Jays offered Garrett Cole $300 million, Yeah. Which, although we obviously weren't going to get him, is just it's just good news, I think. Yeah, I think Jays. it's great news. A couple of weeks ago, I was I was bitching to Ben about the fact that, oh, we never hear about what they offer people. And then, look, back-to-back weeks, we hear about what they've offered people. Yeah, Maybe I'm... somebody's actually listening to this. But anyways, yeah, $300 million, <laughs> I think... I mean, obviously, it's not the fact, it doesn't bother me that we didn't get them, yeah. but it's great to hear that we're actually spending money or like trying to spend, spend money. money. Yeah. Yeah. Like we'd and, never get Cole. He's, oh, no. He's not coming up north to a losing team that lost 90 something games last year. Oh, no. Like, God, no. He's going to go to, you know, the Yankees, which is disgusting. But yeah, that was just exciting to hear. Yeah. And uh, the other big lefty going off the market uh, to the White Sox, Dallas Keuchel on a three year, $55 million deal. Yeah. The White that... Sox are looking pretty solid. Oh, they're they've looking great. Everybody. They've, yeah. They're like the Braves of the fucking American League. Yeah. And then they follow that up with signing Edwin Encarnacion to one year, $12 million deal. Yeah. Oh. It's great. I would have loved to see him on the Jays. Oh, I wanted him back so yeah. badly. He's had uh, 414 home runs at age 37, which is, you know, that's nothing to look past. Uh, he's a, he was a three-time All-Star with the Jays. He also hit the walk-off wild card home run, which is very exciting. Against the Orioles, yeah. Yeah, and he's always been solid. It's just the injuries have slowed him down recently. 
So yeah. But hell, he, what did he get? He got like 34 last year, right? He was off injured and with Seattle and oh, New yeah, York yeah. combined, he, he had like 34 home runs for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, the minute smoke went to Milwaukee, which was sad for me. I thought, <laughs> ooh, yes, we can go back and grab Edwin, and that didn't happen. So right now we're sitting with the uh, Rowdy Tungas and nobody else. But I'm sure they'll fix that up. Yeah. Here and there. But yeah, that was sad to see. But man, the White Sox. That, like I've been saying every week, every team, there's so many good looking teams now yeah. with young guys coming up. And like Keichel as your ace, or Giolito if you want to keep him as your yeah. ace, that's like a great one too. Yeah, if that's... Keichel pitches the way he did after he got his footing last year in Atlanta, and Giolito just keeps doing what he did last year after yeah. having a really good year last I feel like year. The only two complete game shutouts. Oh, no. He threw like 50% of the complete game shutouts last year or something. And they're both against like really good teams. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, I knew I knew he was it was he was having trouble because he it was the early inning thing. He was some stat I saw last year on app his ERA in the first inning alone was like 5.65 or something yeah. and then he got that under control and he was dominant throughout pretty much the entire year. But yeah, that's a team to be reckoned with Grandel. Yeah. As a free agent signing for a catcher, and, uh, the bullpen's a little bit iffy. I still think. Yeah, I don't know anyone in their bullpen. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. Uh, Nate Jones. I think he's still there. Uh, if he is still there, he's half decent at the very least. Uh, they got some hard throwing guys. I can't think of them either, which is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> oh, and but apparently, uh, Dallas Keuchel. Uh, he was battery mates with James McCann in high school. McCann. That's, there's another yeah. guy. That's who's, a nice who's an offensive reunion. catcher. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, that's there's a lot of guys in that team to like. It's a young team, Moncada, yeah. Anderson, even though he blocked me on Instagram, <laughs> Abreu, uh, Abreu yeah. resigned because he got uh, tendered the he qualifying offer. He loves the White Sox. He's like said many times to the media that he wants to like play there for the rest of his career. Yeah, think of look at all that power, Mazzara. Yeah, there's another guy. Mm. That power. They might go over, uh, go after Castellanos. Yeah, they might. They might. If but they get that, that's a. That's impressive. That's an impressive offseason, an impressive team to watch. Abreu, home run hitter at first. Yeah. Edwin, home run, excuse me, home run hitter at DH. Nomar Mazzara, home run hitter in right field. Grandal, home run hitting catcher. Yeah. Defensively, they're horrendous. Oh, yeah, they're not very yeah. good. But Anderson, offensively. off the top of my head, is probably one of the worst <laughs> defensive shorts, shortstops out there. And yeah. I hate the guy. But he's really good at hitting. Yeah. And and uh, I forget the name. They have some young guy coming up who they want to play at second base. I want to say his name is like Derek Friedrich or something like that. I'm that's not his name, but you know, nobody really cares. And they have that uh, rookie, whatever his name is. That Who's rookie that guy, you know? No, I don't know. Oh, name. Jimenez. Yeah, Eli Jimenez. Eli Jimenez. They're a home run lefty. Exactly. And left fielder who hits home runs. Yeah, holy shit! Like that's a good team. And the twins, the twins are good too. They're signing guys to help with their relief core. And the Cleveland Indians, if they keep Lindor and Ramirez aren't going anywhere, I don't think, even though they traded Kluber. Oh, yeah. Indians, they screwed up. Their management just screwed everything up for them. Yeah, that was they a had garbage the greatest fire. starting rotation in even the major leagues, possibly. But they At totally one point, blew yeah. it. Yeah, they blew it. Blew it right up. And now I think they're handing the division over. I mean, thank God the Tigers and the Royals are in that division, so you can get a few <laughs> wins here yeah. and there. But I wouldn't want to face the uh, Ronaldo Lopez, who's like the third White Sox starter. I wouldn't want to face him because he was pretty good in last year, too. Like, you go through the twins with these guys, Odorizzi, Berrios, and I know I'm just listing off guys the top end of the rotation for those two teams, but it's it's a much tougher division than it was the last two years. Oh, it was so easy. Like, compared to the AL East, which is what the Blue Jays have to fight through. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a cakewalk. Yes, exactly. But then these teams start, like, building, and everyone was saying, oh, the White Sox are rebuilding, but they still suck, and they're taking forever to get through it. And then they come out, and Giolito starts pitching well last year, and Jimenez, who they got from the Cubs, starts hitting home runs, and they start calling these guys up, and they got they got young guys down in the farm system. Dane Dunning, who's a starting pitcher uh, I like, who I think can come up. Dylan Cease, who was there last year, who was young. I, it's, a, it's a fun team to watch, and I think... It'll be funner this year. Yeah. It'll be crazy fun to watch. I like one bad division. And I know in the past it's like arguable in the NL Central is that a good division? Is that a bad division? I I think that's a good division. I don't think there's one bad division anymore. And if the ball stayed juiced, the White Sox could probably break the record. Yeah, if that happens. Oh, yeah. Even the the AL West with teams like Texas, I think. Like, we could really give. It it seems like they have potential to be like the greatest or just totally flop. Yeah. They have. It's like hit or miss with that team. Yeah. Because they have all players that could have great all-star seasons or just do horrendous. 
I don't think anybody knows what the hell you're getting with Corey Kluber next year. Oh, God. And you was... can argue the same for Mike Miner yeah. and Lance Lynn. Like, yeah. if those three are all on, yeah. great. Same with Kyle Gibson. If they're all on, beautiful. You have one of the best rotations. But if Kluber does just okay and Lynn and Miner fall back to themselves in a little bit, yeah. you go from, like, one of the top five rotations to just, like, the middle of a pack. Yeah. And all three are veteran guys. They're not old by any stretch. Well, Miner kind of is. But he keeps going. But they're not a young team of a pitching staff, which yeah. is what kind of separates them from teams like the A's and the Astros, who even though they still have um, Zach Granke, yeah. they have guys like McCungers and those guys coming up. So it's an. Int- I just think it's it's going to be a great American League. And the NL too, but the American League to focus American on. American League's historically been, been better yeah. than the National League. It should be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, so that was that. Uh, the couple trades just to go through. The Royals uh, traded for Chance Adams, who I mentioned last week. I thought he was going to get picked up and he'll get a shot. The Royals, I think, are a very good spot for him. He's still young, controllable. He got a dfa for Garrett Cole, right? Yes, he was the he was the casualty of the Garrett Cole signing. Right. Uh, in exchange for Christian Perez, an infielder who was a minor leaguer. He's not going to be up with the Yankees last year, but or next year, I should say, but he'll fill a minor league spot. And the other trade is that the Rangers get Adonis Garcia... From the Cardinals, who was DFA'd uh, in exchange for cash. Garcia, I think, will get a shot as a fourth or fifth outfielder with the Rangers. Uh, other signings, the Diamondbacks signed Cole Calhoun to a two-year $16 million deal. I like that. I love that. Yeah. The Diamondbacks, another team. They're, I don't know. Everyone keeps talking about them wanting to trade Robbie Ray. You just signed Madison Bumgarner. <laughs> yeah, I know. And you so, have Luke Weaver. And they trade Zach uh, Granke. And yeah, they got a ton of prospects for him. Yeah. Like, that's a, another team to watch out for. I don't... I know Robbie Ray, I don't know what his contract is, but to say to trade him just to get rid of the money, you're telling me uh, Robbie Ray, Madison Bumgarner, Luke Weaver, whoever the hell else they have at four and five, yeah. that's not a bad rotation either. Yeah. And I, that's not great. Bumgarner's not an ace, ace like he once was. And they have a pitcher's ballpark too. But they have a pitcher's ballpark. They got guys in their bullpen, Chafin, Bradley here and there, who who do well at certain times. And I think with that offense and Cattell Marte and David Peralta, they have a really good chance. And Christian Walker, who broke out of nowhere oh, last yeah, yeah. year after being DFA'd by the Orioles. <laughs> it's another sneaky good team. And I don't know why they would trade Robbie Ray, but I love this Cole Calhoun signing. Oh, he has a cannon of an arm, too. Oh, yeah. Hits a bunch of home runs. Low He'll average. He'll fill in nicely in the outfield. Yeah. And I, But I think you don't really need a high average hitting guy because you have you have that in David Peralta, and you yeah. don't need more than one. And Cattell Marte. And Cattell Marte on the infield. So it's I think it's going to be another sneaky good team. The Marlins signed Francisco Cervelli to a one-year, $2 million deal. They're just picking up veterans. Seems yeah, like just, fill out their roster. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think they'll be as bad as they were last year, obviously, but I don't think they'll be anything great either. It's just a good experience for the young guys, too, just to be with the veterans. Yeah. Like, like, unlike the Jays right now, what the Marlins are doing, they have a bunch of young guys who aren't really developed, but they're bringing in these veteran guys to help kind of coach them through it, because they're not coaches, but, you know, yeah. teaching the ways of the major leagues, and the Jays don't really have that yet. But I think the Marlins are heading in the right direction, too, although they won't be contending next year at all. The Indians signed Cesar Hernandez to a one-year $6.25 million deal. I don't even mad to see him on the Jays either. No, he's a, he's also a good utility guy. Yeah. One of the most underrated players over the last couple of years for the Phillies. I don't know what is. I think it was like 19 home runs, 70 something RBIs last year. Yeah. He, he's a good guy he, to he have. He can produce. Oh, yeah. That infield now Santana, Hernandez, Lindor, if they keep him, and Ramirez will stay at third now because Hernandez yeah. is a natural second baseman. That's a pretty good infield, too. And yeah. I don't like the Indians, but no. that's nothing to mess around with either. Uh, probably my favorite one of the week was the Padres signed Pierce Johnson. To a two-year, $5 million contract out of Japan, I believe. Uh, he's 28 now. He was a first-round pick by the Cubs in 2012. I thought that was great because it's another guy. He's not too old. He didn't do very well in the minor leagues uh, with the Cubs or the Giants. Whoever they, He bounced around a bit in the MLB before heading over overseas. Yeah. But then he dominated there with the ERA below two, I believe. The Padres are bringing him back on a really, really cheap deal. Yeah, that's like no damage at all. Five million for two years, that's nothing. Two and a half a year. I think that's great. He'll work out of their bullpen if he turns out great. If he doesn't, you eat two and a half million a year. No problem, yeah. no matter what team you are. I I forget there was another guy the Padres signed a couple weeks ago like this who I mentioned, who I thought was a pretty good signing. It, this is like a Shan Yamaguchi signing, except for the Padres. Yeah. Low risk, high reward. If he does really well in the bullpen, then you suddenly have him, Kirby Yates. You have young guys like Trey Wittinger who's coming up. 
uh, David Bednar, who's if yeah, he sticks could be around a good there, eight nine right there. It could be a really good eight nine, and I know it's numbers in Japan, numbers in Asia or Australia, wherever aren't they don't translate as well as they do to the major leagues. But I think it's such a cheap signing. You can't go wrong, and similar yeah. with the Mets getting Batances. That was a that's a great signing. That's a great great signing. I love that. I think Batances wants to stay in New York. He's had a history of just being in New York. He grew up in Manhattan. He went to school in Brooklyn. Played minor league ball in Staten Island. He clearly loves New York. He's been on the Yankees for forever. And I think that really, really ups the Mets' bullpen. Yeah, well, the entire, what is it, NL East had horrendous bullpen. Yeah, nobody could do anything. Yeah. And now, if you go through, like, very briefly, the Mets' bullpen, they got him now, who, if he stays healthy, can be a pretty yeah. good reliever. Seth Lugo, dominant yeah. last year out of the pen. disgusting last year. Edwin Diaz. All he has to do is bounce back and not do what he did last year, and I don't think he will. Yeah. Drew Sfamia, if they keep him around, if he gets his act together. <laughs> Robert Gesellman, who was a good long man for them last year. Yeah. It's a good bullpen that's starting to come together, and I think... And their starting rotation is really good, too, with two oh, yeah. times Cy Young winner DeGrom. And Great pitching staff. And Stroman and Mats and yeah. Porcello and Waka. It's a good, one of those guys, Porcello or Waka, will go to the bullpen, too, to be yeah. a long man. I think that's going to be a great pitching staff. And I read somewhere, I forget, I don't know if it was on ESPN or somewhere, that uh, they signed Batances after they were being finicky about the Daniel Hudson thing. And I obviously don't know if it's true or not, because I just read an article somewhere. But apparently the Mets didn't want to offer Hudson more than a one-year deal, and Hudson was wanting more than one-year yeah. deal, which he probably deserves based yeah. on the year he had last year. So they said, thanks, but no thanks to Hudson, and then they signed Batances. I think they're very similar pitchers uh, in the respect that they both throw relatively hard still yeah. they both dealt they've both dealt with injuries over the last couple of years yeah but relief pitchers are still like the riskiest signing oh yeah it's always a coin flip with them it's like they either you know do as they're supposed to or just do horrendously bad yeah or both right like yeah. hudson was a waiver claim at the end of spring training oh, yeah. he was Hud one of the most dominant pitchers in the second half last year that was a fantastic signing by the jays the oh yeah Jays. and everybody loved him it was great yeah so he, funny I think he, he was blew the first game yeah, he, yeah, he, he was the uh, after game. the Montreal series. He flew in something like he flew in the day before opening day, and they didn't know if they could have him. So Anthony Alford was sitting in the hotel waiting to be added, and then Hudson came in and he did make it there on time. But yeah, after the first like couple weeks there, dominant pitcher for the Blue yeah. Jays, and then he goes to the Nationals and he does pretty good there. So and he I got wish the last him all the best. Of the World Series and yeah, watched him throw chuck his glove and all that. So oh great. yeah, I think it would be a complete shame if he doesn't get more than like a one-year deal because i hate like relievers i know like you said they're up and down always yeah but he's he's in his mid-30s he had a great season last year he's a likable guy and i know you don't pay guys to be likable but somebody should give him a shot i think yeah. i thought the dodgers would but then they uh went out and got like trying for 10 million for one there's year, no way so. he's asking for that much no 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 but he's uh he's i he'll get somewhere he'll hop on a contender i would love to see him go to Oakland. I think that would be a great fit there with that bullpen and Trevino and yeah. Hendricks. He doesn't even have to close. He can be a good eighth inning guy. And yeah. Trevino, Hen uh, Trevino, Hudson, Hendricks, 7, 8, 9, I think that'll really help their bullpen because Oakland doesn't have a great pitching staff by any stretch of the imagination either. Yeah. So I thought that would be good. Uh, a couple minor league things to talk about. The Twins signed Wilfredo Tovar to a minor league deal, and the Tigers DFA'd Brandon Dixon, who I I didn't think they would DFA him because he's still young. He had a pretty good season. Uh, hit a couple home runs for them. He was called up uh, early last year, but I guess they didn't like that he struck out too much. But still, the Tigers are the Tigers, and I think you got to give these guys a shot. He'll hop on somewhere. I mean, in this day, do strikeouts really matter anymore? Yeah. It's like, no, no one really nobody cares. Nobody really cares, yeah. I find. And Brandon Dixon, I want to say he's like 26 or 27 or something. Like, he's... He's not old by any stretch of the imagination at all. And I think he'll hop, he'll get a contract, whether probably a minor league deal with someone, but he'll be up in the majors. The Rangers DFA uh, Jimmy Herget, who they recently, uh, previously got from the Reds on the roster for like two weeks, and then they cut him. And the Mets DFA'd Sam Haggerty, who gets screwed over again. I don't have, I don't know if you've looked at this guy's like nope. history. Every dominates triple a he's like a second baseman utility type yeah. guy dominates the minor leagues dominates triple a gets called up the minute he gets called up i think he plays in like one game or something oh, and then they have cano come back from injury and he's sent down never heard from again and he's like 
killed it everywhere he goes, but the Mets just don't have a spot for him. And so I he'll definitely be picked up by someone next year. But yeah, he's the epitome of like a great story with no room. And I'm now that there's 26 man rosters, he'll yeah. get a spot. But that was not just unfortunate. It is. It's I hate to see it with these guys, but I mean, I guess you're not going to bench for Cano and you're not going to bench for McNeil. But come on. Yeah. If he's hitting like above 300 in AAA and doesn't strike out and he's a good utility guy. Hell, the Cubs signed Hernan Perez, right, to a minor league deal, and he's pretty much the same thing. Maybe a bit worse on the hitting side of things. So I think somebody will get him, and whoever gets him, I think will be lucky. Uh, some guys signed overseas again. Yeah, uh, the KBO, which is a Korean baseball organization or something. The Samsung Lions signed Tyler Saladino. I believe he was on the Padres or something. Uh, he was in the White Sox system. White Sox, right. Uh, he had an OPS plus of eight. And, uh, that and means... the Brewers. Okay. I screw that one up. He was with he got drafted by the White Sox, but he was with Brewers oh, last right, year. Right. Uh, he had an OPS plus of eight, and uh, average average uh, major leaguer is at a hundred, which means he's way below the average player. Way below, but uh, so he maybe, was just a fill-in guy. Yeah, like he's he's he had the, sixty-five at bats. Yeah, for, he's the equivalent yeah. of somebody else's Andy Burns in the Blue Jay system. Like he's rarely up. Uh, he was up with the White Sox a couple of years ago for a more of a longer stretch of time. But I don't believe he ever really did anything. But he's a a decent option for a minor league team or for a major league team looking to fill out their minor league roster or going over to Korea yeah. like you said. And he'll get an opportunity and maybe he can show everyone what he's got and yeah. what they're missing out on. Uh, the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks signed Matt Moore to a one-year $3.5 million deal. Uh, he's 30 years old and with a career ERA of 4.51. Not just like... Yeah, uh, he was... Um, I don't know. So many, many years ago when Trout and Harper were both prospects, at yeah. one point, the trio of like next generation studs were thought to be Trout, Harper, and Matt Moore <laughs> with the Rays. And he had a dominant couple of years there uh, in his young, early 20s. At posted Detroit, a low he was year, really good in Detroit. In Detroit, too. And then injuries just sent yeah. him off the side of the boat and he could never bounce back. He, I think he had around a 5 ERA the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. He wasn't doing too well. He wasn't doing too well, but... This is another guy that can go over there. He is. It's on a one-year deal with in plenty of incentives, so he could make up to six million bucks. And if he does great, great. Somebody in the major leagues will sign him again because he's shown how good he can be through stretches of time years ago. Yeah. And I mean, if somebody's paying Pierce Johnson five million for two years, somebody's gonna pay Matt more money. And he's a lefty starting pitcher, and he can eat innings. Sure. So I think it's somebody go. Somebody will go after him for sure. I thought the Angels would actually go after him when I saw that. I'm thinking, hmm, who needs lefty pitching <laughs> that's cheap because they don't have a lot of money? Yeah. Oh, the Angels! But no. No, I mean, the Angels just need any pitching at all. I mean, what's left on the market for them? Well, it's just trades now, mostly. I mean, I was looking through, like, the, the free agency, like, the top 50 free agents going into the offseason, yeah. and I mean, like, they don't need any more hitting, so Donaldson's excluded. Yeah. But they, all these yeah. guys are being eaten up like i mean they're gonna be <sighs> yeah angels are gonna be another i mean the rockies got screwed team. over the rockies last year couldn't find anyone they used chichi gonzalez chichi i don't think any pitcher wants to go to the rockies just no. for the sake of their stats but it's like a similar guy i mean like just some guy yeah. that's gonna be up and I, they're gonna get screwed over unless they do find a deal for someone i mean i can't think of anyone off the top of my head there i'm sure there are guys out there but I mean, it's yeah, it's a tough situation for them because they all they wanted was pitching, and then they gave them Rendon, and they're still not happy. Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's tough to get pitching when. Well, there I think their main guy was Garrett Cole, and he's uh, been a Yankee fan for the, his entire life. Yeah, so. that that didn't work. Yeah, they've had a rough. Garrett Richards too was there, for, and he didn't pan out. Yeah. They had a. I hate to say it, but they've had a couple guys, you know, yeah. die on them too, which I. It, they had a tough. They've had a tough time. That's yeah. all I'm gonna say, right? Like they've had a tough time keeping guys on the field. And Andrew Heaney, I mean Andrew Heaney, might be their ace still. And he had a he had a good last year, but he ain't no ace. Yeah. He is not an ace. Yeah. He is very like far a three, from that. Three four guy so. for a regular. And yeah, you throw him on the Yankees, he might be like a fifth guy, maybe. <laughs> like it's, it's a tough scene. And I mean, hopefully they have young guys. And it sucks for Trout. Trout. That guy is, oh, yeah, his career is just yeah. being wasted. What a waste. They're going to be another... What? Well, I hesitate to actually say wasted because he signed that massive deal, right? Yeah. So he wants to be there. Yeah. 
which I think is great. I'm all team players that want to stick with one team their entire career. Career, I love it, but it's Mike Trout and it's the Angels, and that offense can only do so much. So, all right. that's that. Well, moving on, uh, some just some news here, not really trades or anything, but Rich Hill and what White, the hell was that? They were arrested at Gillette Stadium. Uh, it was reported that it was like a, a big duffel bag or something, but then in his apology on Twitter, he said that it was a fanny pack. They wanted oh. to bring in a fanny pack to the stadium. To a Patriots game? Like, yeah. what the hell? And he, I also read somewhere that he just kept getting rejected by each gate, so he just kept going around the outside <laughs> of the stadium. Like, yeah. what the hell? I mean, it kind of sucks for him. Who the hell does that? Is he, has, he's still unsigned, right? He is unsigned, and he will be out until midway through next year with because he had oh, surgery for something. Right. Okay. So, I mean, he'll probably get signed too, but come on, man. Like, I don't, I don't even have a response. I don't know what to say to that. I mean, what could possibly be in the fanny pack that was so important? Or in, like, what what was preventing them from bringing it in? Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. NFL stadiums in the U.S. are so much weirder than any other national sports stadium because they're so protective about, you know, their players and you can't have beer. I mean, nobody can bring in beer, but you it's like they're very specific about what you can and cannot do. Yeah. But I wonder if it's, like, just a tiny little, like, you know, one of those pens that's like a four-in-one and has a little laser pointer on the end. Yeah. And they're just like, no, you can't come in with that. Like and he was just stubborn and forgot camera. to throw it away. Like, it's... Yeah. Uh, that. So that was weird. Okay. And then moving on. This is... I uh, just wanted to do a little recap of the decade here. Oh, yeah. So major stories happened. And, uh, we'll a lot of stuff. The Cubs winning the World Series for the first time in a hundred some years. Oh, that was so fun to watch against yeah. the Indians. It's like I don't know. It's fun to watch teams just you know be horrible, but then you yeah. see a team like you know you kind of got to cheer for the underdogs a little bit. Oh, I do that all the time. And I like now. Then I was cheering for the Cubs because I just didn't like the Indians for whatever reason. But now I have this no reason at all. <laughs> I hate the Cubs now. <laughs> they they were bad. For so long, and then they did something really good, and they won the World Series, and then they kept being good, and I didn't like that. I yeah. I don't know what clicked in my brain, but I'm like, I don't like Chicago. Yeah, I mean, they kind of they screwed up their team a little bit, too. And their, their salary is completely fucked. Like, they're... Yeah. I don't know. They're thinking about trading Bryant, and they screwed him over on the service time thing, and he's still pissed off about that. Like, that's a messed up team. Javier Baez doing Javier Baez things, like swinging oh, yeah. at pitches in the dirt, <laughs> and like... Taking the biggest hacks, O2. Daddy hack, O2, curveball in the dirt, that sort of thing. Yeah, but he was, like, MVP candidate two years ago, so... Overrated! Can't be that bad. Overrated. Uh, yeah, and then I think the biggest notable from any Blue Jays fan would be that Jose Bautista home run... Can it probably the Canadian five. sports... Well, no, because well, Kawhi, Kawhi and Leonard yeah, did, the Kawhi thing. did the thing. Well, forget Kawhi and Leonard. Pretend that never happened. Yeah. That, Bautista would have been the biggest one, I think. Yeah. Oh, that was so that nice. That was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing I to remember watch live. watching that game on my TV, and I'm sitting there, and the minute Martin threw the ball back and Odor you know, scored and Chu was holding out his bat, I'm like, this can only go bad. <laughs> and I, the minute it happened, I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, there is no way that this is going to go for the Jays. Like, this is 100% going yeah. Texas way, because that garbage I mean, like, never they, happens. They took... What two straight games, and then yeah. we have to come back and win three straight, which is kind of unlikely with the the Rangers at the time. God. But then we win two straight, and now we have game five where everything's kind of going to shit. People are throwing beer bottles everywhere. Yeah, I was so messed up. The, yeah. The, I remember the final out of that game was like Osuna on the mound. He was facing Will Venable, and like I only remember that because that was like the last game Will Venable played in his <laughs> career, and he struck out. And now he's, like, a coach in the minors, or for the... Maybe he's, he, he might actually be a Padres coach now or something. But I just... What a shitty way to go out. Yeah. That, <laughs> that game, that ends your career. I was, like, one of those games or, like, just any event on TV where you just remember where you were and what you were doing at the time. Yeah. Uh, same with the Edwin run. Yeah, that was, yeah. So, Bautista was 15. Edwin was 16. Yeah. And that was... I mean, Baltimore is probably still pissed off about that. <laughs> yeah, that was a... That was, that was what, the Zach Buck Walter, one, right? Yeah. Really oh, screwed God. that game. Like a ground ball pitcher in their bullpen. I'm no genius, but I've said for many years, Ubaldo Jimenez sucks. Yeah. And he sucks. He <laughs> sucked, and he still sucks. And, I mean, not taking anything away from him, he was good on the Rockies, like, a decade ago. But that was a decade yeah. ago. And you're... I don't... 
what the hell, I guess, right? Yeah. And then Britain left after. Was He left, right? Oh, yeah. That was his he, free agent year, and yeah. he went off to... Or maybe got... Tra- I don't know. He left Baltimore. Yeah. And everyone was annoyed with that. I'm sure they're still annoyed. I mean, why would he stay after? They totally blew it. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Baltimore's not the biggest market. Yeah. But, like, people hold grudges, and Showalter got fired for that, pretty much. I know he I got mean, fired he much totally later. He totally screwed but, it up. Yeah. They could have... They could have taking that game deeper but whole different like yeah. if if they put in britain and he maybe edwin would have hit the home run anyways but if it didn't and baltimore won whole everything from then on would have changed i know yeah. it's stating the obvious but oh man yeah we and then this mike trout thing that we already went over and mike trout sad. is stupid good he's so goddamn he's good. so good like the top war leaders of the year was mike trout and then 20 points under was kershaw or something ridiculous like that yeah like okay, he's obviously a Hall of Famer. It's no one's even close either. Yeah, like it's How no did one. Someone gets so good at baseball is it's just ridiculous. Yeah, and then uh, also from the decade we have the increased number of home runs, which I don't like personally. Yeah, I, I think it's stupid. boring to watch. This uh... the difference between minor league and major league baseball. Yeah, I just don't. <laughs> honestly, I don't really care for it. I mean, like I care about it because I'm stupid that way, but it's just such an, a stupid story to me. You know, like, it's it was a story last year at some point, too, when, like, during the All-Star game, somebody... Or it was the Cubs, right? It was Ben Zobris, and people were getting pissy about his shoes. Like, what color oh, shoes yeah, he yeah, wore. Yeah. These stupid stories <laughs> that nobody cares. And I know players care because they're the ones using the balls. Yeah. But if I'm paying an overpriced ticket to go to an empty Rogers Center to see Vladimir Guerrero, I do not give two fucks what the ball is. <laughs> right? Yeah. And well, I know... Just like- it, it's just, home runs get boring after a while. It does. They're exciting like one or two times in a game, but hitting them four times in a game when no one's on base, it's just not exciting. Yeah, and I know it's somebody's got to do something about it. What that is and who that is, I don't know and I really don't care, but it's, I don't know, just make a ball and let everybody use the ball, right? Like, yeah. I don't, I know that's it's not that easy. But like, <laughs> the thing is, people could have lost their jobs over that. I mean, pitching coaches that had their pitchers suddenly giving up a bunch of home runs could have potentially lost their job and... Yeah, I know. I mean, well, they probably outside. did, right? Like, yeah. the Mets had a joke of a... Gave up so many home runs, and they fired their pitching coach, and they brought in some uh, old Nine guy old. who turned it into a... He, yeah, I know. He did well, surprisingly. Yeah. I'm thinking, this 80-year-old guy, what's he going to do? And then they have like, one of the best bullpens over the last two months of the season, yeah. aside from Edwin Diaz. And so, I mean, things can happen, but yeah, losing people losing their jobs, pitchers, right? Yeah. All it takes is, you know, you give up... Three home runs in one inning. You're never seeing the majors again. Yeah. But right? you get DFA'd, you are gone. You could be gone. And, and it's like, a tough scene. 2017, a new rookie home run record was set. And then 2019, a brand new rookie home run record was set at yeah. 53. Like, that's, I mean, that's complete correlation. Stupid. Yeah. Like, you, you just look at the numbers and be like, oh, yes, it was, it was you know, flatlining. And then maybe it grew a little bit. Then holy fuck, Aaron Judge came in the league. Yeah. And then holy mm. shit... Reese Hoskins started hitting home runs. I know they're good. Oh, yeah, and then there's like all these stories about rookies that hit eight home runs in their first five games. Jordan like, Alvarez. Uh, Aristides Aquino. Aquino. And, <laughs> my God. Aquino, that joke of a Cincinnati team last year. And he was hitting shots. Uh, slowed down Michael after. Lorenzen. Yeah. Michael Lorenzen. Big who biceps. I love. But he shouldn't be hitting <laughs> home runs. And, I mean, it's really too bad it couldn't, you know, translate to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And that's kind of... I think he just has to work on his exit exit launch angle or whatever. Because he just spikes everything into the ground. And then yeah. Um, but, like, the anything. minute that was the story, right? And we're thinking, oh, a lot of home runs. Ooh, we got Vladdy. Ooh, we got Tellez, who are both home run hitters. And then neither really do they, a whole yeah. lot. That sets off an alarm. Tellez bats, like, what, 210. That was disappointing. Yeah, that was really disappointing. And then I think that can be combined with, like, you know, the technology advancements yes. in the major leagues with Trevor Bauer played a big thanks part to Trevor to that. Bauer yeah all the spin rate and Ooh, spin rate this, spin rate that. I get it it Twitter. helps but I mean yeah I know I'm not mad because it works and it helps people and it helps pitchers but there's so many stats now and like he kind of like, he kind of brought the high fastball back yeah he did like, yeah him and, and um all those guys that like uh got driveline yeah. Is it? Yep. And then the Cincinnati Reds like hired almost yeah, the they're entire hiring. driveline <laughs> yeah. uh, organ company organization whatever you want to call it. So I mean, Trevor Bauer is a, a good great, pitcher. Great. Yeah, he's a good pitcher, but I think he'll do a better job as a pitching coach. Oh, he'll be he a great pitcher. Coach. If he doesn't everything. like piss everyone off. Yeah. I'm. 
I don't even... It sounds like I'm yelling because I hate the guy. I don't <laughs> hate the guy. I just... It's such a fuss. Yeah. Like, everything he does, rightful or yeah, not... There's always, like, drama. It's a fuss. It's drama, and I'm so sick and tired of it. You are a very good pitcher on a very good pitching staff of a team. He got into beef with uh, Kevin Euclid on Twitter, of all people. Yeah. About how... Something that. about batting stances. Yeah. And, like, teaching kids or something. Euclid, the guy who... Yeah. That, ooh, bat over my head, uh, hands, like, apart from each other, waving it, and... Like like the king of walks, Kevin Euclid in the minor leagues. That was so, so dumb for me. <laughs> At Twitter beef, like, if you want to call it between players now, like, remember it was, uh, it was you Darvish and it was, Oh, um, you Darvish and Christian Yelich? Yelich. Yelich just looked bad there. Yelich looked awful. Because like, he got, like, triggered right away. Yeah. But, and I know Darvish didn't do anything bad. No one's criticizing him really for it. But, come on, it's Twitter. Everybody does shit on Twitter now. Yeah. There's so... Instead of like, you know, oh, you Darvish being, I hate Chris... I know he doesn't, but if he did, oh, I hate Christian Young, so I'm going to throw a fastball at his head. And I know you shouldn't have that happen. But now it's like, oh, I'm just going to... I'm going to tweet about it. <laughs> this guy's an asshole. Oh, that's nice. It's online. Yeah. And it's, you go through like Darvish's Twitter and it's all jokingly... jokingly oh, it's great. His Twitter... Like, one yeah. of the greatest Twitter accounts yeah. I've seen in all pro sports. Like he told someone to die eating fried chicken, I think. Because their name was fried chicken, but then like, <laughs> Christian Yelich just kind of seems like a little, a little. Uh, but even like him, he got into the thing with that Roxanne person, right? Oh yeah. And that that came up. I saw it yesterday. Rox, because somebody if they turned it into a Christmas mug. Oh, someone god. got it as a gift, <laughs> and Roxanne's like, "Oh my god, this is so cool!" And Dar or uh, Yelich Which, responded, yeah. "Thanks, Roxanne." He like, changed his walk up song oh. to Roxanne for the yeah. next few days after that. Yeah, like it's such a at least they're like, developing thing, and I know it's just gonna keep at least going. It's becoming but... marketable because. MLB is horrendous at marketing players. Yeah, but then there's a line, right? Yeah. Like, I, I I, know you don't really follow the NFL, but I mentioned last week this cornerback, Janoris Jenkins, on the Giants, on on Twitter all the time, he, ca he called a fan a retard, and he, got, <laughs> he lost a job for it, and then he got picked up by a better team, so it doesn't really matter. But there's a fine line between, like, interaction and just being a dick. Yeah. And, you know, some fan who's probably a mouthy asshole anyways... But even if he, like, oh, you know, your mama wears army boots, she's fat. And then he turns around and calls him a retard, right? Like, yeah. it happens in the NBA all the time. The thing with Kyle Lowry pointing out someone in the crowd. I don't yeah, know if you yeah, saw yeah. that. Last year, it was someone Lowry being shoved in the playoffs by, yeah. like, a Golden State owner. A part owner yeah, yeah, did part that. Owner. Like, it's... He got fined, like, or he lost his share and everything. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But it's but he's just, a billionaire. A, who cares, right? Yeah, there's a fine line between interaction and, like, you know, overstepping your boundary line. And Twitter, it's so easy because I know it's, we're getting all like, you know, off topic here, but it's through a screen, right? So you can say whatever the hell you want. Yeah. But, oh man, it's so, oh, <laughs> I don't even know how we started this. We were talking about Trevor Bauer and like I somehow. Advancements, Trevor Bauer, Twitter. We got, oh yeah, Twitter, Twitter beef, right? Yeah. Like, and it happens with everyone. Like, there are countless guys, right? Like it was, uh, what was the most recent one? It was Max Muncy. Did you hear, see the thing he posted on Instagram? No, was it so, about Madison Bumgarner? No, this was about fans sending him fan mail, like, to get autographs or whatever. So I'm actually on his side for it, because I don't think grown adults should be sending people, finding out someone's address and then emailing, or sending them shit. Like, I don't agree with that at all. Yeah. But the way Muncie put it is, like, he took a picture on Instagram and he said, I just came back from vacation with the family, and then I show up and there's all this thing all this uh, mail here for you guys to want me to sign. And can you guys just let me, leave me alone. It's the off season. Let me have my private time with my family, yeah. which is nice. I agree with that. But if you look at the picture, it was like, he claimed that, oh, he just walked in and he found all this stuff. And it's like perfectly organized, <laughs> like the size of the letters. Oh, and then there's geez. packages in the back. So he obviously, somebody Arranged took it. time to make it photogenic. And then he's like, oh, I hate all you. It's like, okay, then throw it out. Maybe he cares about his uh, Instagram feed and how it looks. I guess, but I fully support that. I like, don't. If someone sends you stuff you don't want, oh, oh throw it out. Send Chuck it back. It, yeah. Who cares? It's not their business to be sending you stuff and finding out your address. <laughs> but like making it all nice and like, oh, there's like 200 things here. But it's I'm, it's by color and then it's by size and there's boxes in the back. Boxes <laughs> of what? That's the other thing I want to know. What's in the box? But like. Wait, so were people sending him stuff to sign and then Yeah, so it's it's like... Just, like, I, open it and take it and keep it. Yeah, or that. Or you can loss. be, like, put out a thing saying, okay, don't send me stuff anymore. But, yeah, so kids... Mostly kids do that, so it's like... 
Oh, oh I yeah. want a autograph from like Archie Bradley. And there's some guys who are good about that. Like Archie Bradley does yeah. that a lot. Pat Neshek like is legendary because for that on Twitter, he likes, I think collects baseball cards or something like that. And he's really interactive with fans. He loves talking to people. But then there's Muncie who's like, get this shit away from me. And then he <laughs> followed it up the post after by saying, um, you know, I didn't mean it malicious. I didn't mean it to be like mean or anything. I just want you guys to give me my space. I'm 100% on board with that. Yeah. But it's like, okay, it's still online though. And it's subject like to scrutiny, right? Like people on Twitter and on Instagram can take things the wrong way. Yeah. And then what else, where else are you going to do it? I don't know, but it's yeah. so much meaningless drama, right? <laughs> like some of it's funny. Like Bauer's kind of funny. But I don't need to see Darvish in like broken English yelling at <laughs> Yelich, who's yelling at Darvish, and then Josh Donaldson got involved by I don't know if you saw that comment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, Josh Donaldson uh, took he, it lighthearted. Yeah, he was joking around saying yeah. like, "Oh, I need all the help I can get. I can't hit Darvish or something yeah. like that." And Yelich just keeps going. I'm like, like shut up! It's like Christian Yelich. The Brewers got accused of sign stealing, and when you like become super defensive right away, that's kind of suspicious. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> The, speaking of sign stealing, the Astros, the decade, that's a big story. Ooh, I didn't mean to hit that. The decade in review thing that we're doing, the Astros, that has to be part of it. Oh my god. Okay, so the Astros scandal, they were sign stealing in 2017 using a, what, a TV in a, their, in their in hallway. Their club, in their hallway, and yeah. they got it because somebody did a World Series documentary, right, or a season yeah, documentary. Yeah, yeah. And then there's someone there that would watch the catcher sign, because there's a camera dedicated in center field to the catcher sign, and they'd bang a trash can, uh, trash can depending on what sign was put down i mean like suspicion was building up for the past couple of years that something was going on the yankees accused him of whistling and stuff and there's all that drama but then it finally came out thanks to ken rosenthal and all those guys has anything actually happened yet do you know no nothing's nothing's happened there's been like stories about how you know there's a catcher in the bullpen putting down hands on their wall depending on what pitch was coming it's like it's so screwed up i hate it but it's 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 fun almost in good team funny because it's to hear about all these things and it's like oh we set up cameras here and here and we got guys in yeah. the dugout bang and catchers hanging over the bullpen wall you know moving fingers yeah. and people like with binoculars and it's like sent, a spy emails, movie yeah they sent emails to scouts asking for yeah <laughs> for tips and tricks on how to steal signs yeah so if you guys uh, want to go to our game and you know tell us what you think where we should put these cameras to like help you see the signs like it's so excessive yeah the Jays, you remember the, I mentioned this before, the man in white in center field. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, There's that some, was yeah, just yeah. stupid. And everyone was like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> but at least they didn't use cameras and computers yeah. and TV screens and banging shit. Like, oh my god. Uh, that kind of just puts their uh, World Series victory kind of in a Oh, it gives it an asterisk question mark, for sure, yeah. right? Like, it says, oh, we won, but we, we cheated getting here. And, yeah. so, oh man, that has to... I hope punishments come out soon, and uh, people are saying AJ Hinch should be banned forever from baseball. No, it's not going to happen. I don't think. I wouldn't mind it. I don't really like the Astros anymore because they're good. And the know, only thing I would bad. say is that if you're gonna try and do something like that and ban AJ Hinch, you gotta ban the GM. You gotta ban the owner. Oh, yeah. And I don't think if you're my point is if you've got to do one, you got to do it all. Yeah. And I don't think anyone has the balls to do it all. Yeah. And Nolan Ryan left the no one front yeah. office this year, too. I, so I th- he might have known what was going on. Yeah. And I'm sure there were people in it who disagreed with it, right? Like, yeah. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Joe Biagini, right? His yeah. t- he signed it and he's like, tweeted out saying, you know, we got to have somebody in the bullpen <laughs> when all these guys get suspended. So lighthearted and like that. Yeah. But. So I assume that means he wasn't involved in it. Oh, no. <laughs> but they got to... I don't know what they got to do. They Just pay guys to figure this out. and then Suspend people. They have to cut free agent stuff, like uh, draft days and international I signings. Think, I think what they'll do are three things. Lose draft picks. Yeah. Um, take away their international free agency, like, you know, spending money. Yep. And then maybe suspend a couple guys. A couple guys, like literally a couple, like two like I don't. Yeah. Well, mostly their front office, I think, needs yeah. to be whooped. And, and I've never understood that. Like, okay, so you suspend, let's say, let's say, well, here's a good example. Let's say the Blue Jays suspend Ross Atkins, or the MLB suspends Ross Atkins because they found out he was like, you know, snorting coke in the back room, right? Like, let's say something stupid like that happens, and you suspend yeah. him. So you suspend the GM. He's, what do you actually lose? 
Uh, he loses pay. He, so he loses gets a pay. Bit who's rich anyways? Yeah. But you don't lose. The players are still the players. Yeah. The manager's still managing, and he can just sit at home, right, lying on his bed, watching whatever the hell he wants to watch, yeah. and call up and be like, "Yo, I want to, I want to cut Aaron Loop." <laughs> like he, it doesn't actually affect the it's chain also of command. Like an image thing, because that probably uh, yeah, you makes lose people, respect, yeah. right? Like similar to the not similar, but Mike Babcock, that whole thing, right? Like he lost all credibility yeah. and all that. But yeah, I I don't claim to be a genius, but I think. I don't think they can just do too much because once you do one thing, everyone's going to be like, well, you suspend the GM, but you don't suspend the owner, and you suspend AJ Hinch, but you don't suspend Martin Maldonado, who was banging a drum in the... Like, it's... Yeah. It's just so... It's so ridiculous, and it's such a pain in the ass. Like, everyone just wishes... Like, and just... I bet people wish it didn't come out, too, right? Like, if nobody ever knew about it, it would save everyone a lot of hassle. Yeah, but it needs to come out. It needs to come out. But like then Astros it's a pain in the fans ass. are still managing to defend everything they do. Which oh, yeah. Is very impressive. Because after the... everything that just keeps piling Some on. Some goddamn Astros Instagram account I stumbled across, like, right after it happened, and Astros were, like, the main focus. Like, no one yeah. gave a shit about Milwaukee yet. Yeah. And then they're posting, like, <gasps> you know what? Milwaukee did this, and Arizona might be doing this. And it's like, shut the actual fuck up. Yep. You guys, or you started it. Yep. You st- I know you're you're pointing at Milwaukee and okay Milwaukee maybe they did something but they didn't win anything doing it yeah and they're calling I know they it, shouldn't do it yeah but the, come on they're calling Mike Fires a snitch on online and yeah. stuff it's like oh he did the right thing how dare he yeah didn't he throw a no hitter with Houston yep uh, and, was that with what it no, might have been one with, with, with that was the A's but he did he had two so oh, yeah. it might have been Detroit and Houston or Detroit uh, and Oakland. whatever he was a good decent pitcher for them and uh if somebody comes out saying i don't agree with the method of how we're winning yeah, of how we're cheating and everyone just <laughs> goes off on him like um oh god if i forget the name carson smith with the red sox came out and talked about it yeah. not because the red sox were doing it, but he said you know this needs to get out there and fires came out and he obviously talked about it and bauer did he was leading the charge a little bit too i think yeah and there were a few other guys some other minor leaguers but it's just you say one thing, and it's the whole, shut up and know your place. Like, dude, Carson Smith just accomplished more than you could <laughs> on Twitter your entire life. And he has just as valid a point yeah. as anyone else. And it's just so infuriating to see. <laughs> and this, these young guys get screwed up. Like, Jordan Alvarez is probably caught up in the middle of this. I don't know if he's did it or not. I don't know if he was accomplished uh, and accomplished so. or not. But even, uh, who's the Canadian? Abraham Toro. Oh, yeah, he yeah. got called up. And he's, dude, guys, be a genie. just stuck in the middle of this. And they're like, I don't want a part of this. But then they can't speak out because everyone will ridicule them. And they'll yeah. get, they'll lose their jobs. And com- merge that with the Brandon Tobman, the Osuna thing. Like, oh, right, what right. a garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're, they're garbage four months. Front office, their, their entire kind of behind the scenes is just horrible this year. They went from being like one of the most respected, well-rounded. Yeah. They sucked. Then they came back. Now they're one of the most dominant teams. To, yeah. Wow, everyone just is a lying piece of shit over there. Yeah, they're like one and of no the one worst teams them. of the decade, but they won a World Series. Yeah, it's like if they could have just... If Tobman could have just shut up and everyone just... They could, didn't use cameras and they just like, Oh, you have Altuve, Springer, Alvarez, Beltran that one year, I think, too. Yeah. McCann. If you just did well instead of relying on people hitting things yeah everyone would be so much happier and the, I know. the dodger fans that are like oh we should we should get the a rematch we should get a rematch we should get a win oh you want carlos beltran out of retirement <laughs> oh he's mad who's he managing the mets the mets oh i guess we're just gonna pull him back oh, mccann he- who wanted out we're gonna <laughs> bring back mike fires to that team <laughs> was osuna on that team no uh, he was was he 26 no he was on 26. I think it was. I it was think he came in 2018. Yeah. So Osuna's there, and like Will Harris and Ryan Presley wasn't as good then. It's like, what are you talking yeah, it's a, about? It's a totally different situation. You can't kind of yeah bring it by. And it's like, oh, we had such a nice. So many good things happened in the decade, the last yeah. 10 years, and then this garbage happens, and like it's just negative now. Everybody looks for negatives. The Astros. Oh, uh, the the. Uh, the next thing, the last thing I have on my list here is nobody signing veteran free agents. <laughs> like, okay, I actually kind of understand that one because yeah. it's like the there's, analytics there's say risk. don't do yeah, it. There's but risk still, and money like, and... it's not like Satchel Page when he, you know he'd pitch till he was fifty-five or something ridiculous. Throw one hundred and sixty yeah. complete games in two years yeah, in yeah. one year, and like I get it, it's different, but 
I mean, Daniel Hudson. Yeah. If Sergio Romo can still get a contract, anybody can get a contract, I think. And I know he's, I mean, he's analytically probably a little bit better. But analytics, too, with the tech thing. I love them. They're useful. But, man, do they ruin people's careers sometimes, right? Yeah. Like, 15 years ago, you see, like, I don't know. I Maybe he was analytically good, but A.J. Burnett, right? Who was on the Jays. Oh, and yeah, thinking. Yeah. Oh, his ERA was like three. I don't know if it was, but like 3.4. He's good and he's 34, but maybe he'll be good and somebody will sign him. And then now, if like that happened nowadays, it'll be like, oh, oh yeah, that was his ERA. His hard hit contact yeah, sucked. Yeah, yeah. It's all these like advanced statistics about he, his rotations it. per second, yeah. which shit. He's getting cut. Like it's just. It's like oh. adjusting it to ballparks in certain conditions and yeah. when the sun was out that day or. Hmm, yes. Will Harris, uh, night night games on Tuesdays in Atlanta, actually has a zero ERA. Yeah. Well, that's because he threw one inning <laughs> once, and he never pitched there again. It's like, like even Fox Sports has the stupidest stats God. show up on like underneath their players. It's hmm, so yes. dumb. This man's OBP plus OPS plus home runs hit on a Thursday yeah. during, I don't know, spring. The first two months of spring, right? Like, oh, this guy's a really good spring training hitter. <laughs> What the hell are you going to do with How that information? How does that transfer it? It's yes. Just, some stupid And stuff. it's just going to keep going, and it's never going to stop, I don't think. And maybe it's for the better, maybe it's for the worse, but yeah. Anyways, I we said this was going to be a shorter podcast. Yeah, well, we're at 56 minutes We're right at 56 now. minutes currently. Ben's going to be pissed, because he wanted a short one. He wanted his idea of a short one. We got 18 views last time I checked on the last one. That's because it was festive. That's because it was all attractive. you doing festive stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, hey... We'll round this out. Maybe I'll, we'll just talk for the next three minutes. Keep it an hour exactly to be completest about the whole thing. But yeah, so I mean, sports will just keep on going. Next, starting today, the NHL is back. Games are happening. A lot of games. The Cotton Bowls I mentioned. My Dallas Stars. Fun to watch. I don't know how they're gonna skate around. It's gonna be how so are your hot Dolphins in Texas. Doing? I don't want to talk about that. Your Miami Dolphins? Well, okay. I, I, they weren't they they, supposed to like, supposed to get no yeah, wins. They even fucked that up. They were supposed to do terrible. And then they, they're they like 4-4 four and four in their last eight games. Oh, like, yeah. thanks, guys. They're 4-4. Uh, so they're getting no reward for being... Well, no, they're going to have like one of the top five picks because they're going to lose to the Patriots this weekend. And there's so much... NFL, NFL's such a garbage league because it comes down to... like they're The Raiders, who I said, are probably out of it. If enough things happen, they can get in on like an eight and eight, five hundred record, oh, and it's like strength of schedule and points per game per like the hardest schedule, some shit like that. Yeah. And it's just the stupidest thing. It's like they're not gonna make it anyways. But if everything goes right and they win by twenty four and the Titans lose by one, like it's stuff like it's just a joke. Uh, no, my my doll. It's fun. It's fun. It's Watch fun to watch them suck. Oh. I mean, they're they're they're, they're bad. But yeah, it's... they're bad. But I thought they're supposed to be like horrendously bad. Oh yeah, no, they got a great head coach. It's the only time like I would argue. Oh, a team that's four and four and eleven. Oh, he should could be a coach of the year candidate <laughs> because he got four wins. Yeah, <laughs> and they've signed some guys. And Parker got resigning. He's done really well. Ryan Fitzpatrick was the AFC Offensive Player of the Week last week. Uh, I love Ryan. Do you know who Ryan Fitzpatrick is? No. You shouldn't look up, forgetting his football stuff. Look up his like interviews and stuff. Absolutely hilarious. Is he, he like Joe Biagini funny? Or he's is he he's grunky, awkward probably funny? better than Joe Biagini, oh, I would say. His yeah. he wears a because you know they wear helmets. His uh, yeah. chin strap, people compare it to like a jock strap because yeah. it's, it's big so and big. it looks like a jock strap. <laughs> it's he's one of the funniest guys in the NFL, but and he's done decently with Miami. But yeah, so next week, sports will ramp back up and we'll have more to talk about. Uh, ben will be back from <laughs> beautiful British Columbia, hopefully with plenty of stories to tell. Maybe that one will be a short one. Maybe, maybe that one will be a short one. Maybe Probably no more like signings. Probably won't be that many signings. Or... No, I mean, hey, I'm still waiting for Matt Germany to get signed, and that'll be a two-hour one because I can <laughs> dive into all the analytics on that and talk about how good he'll be. But yeah, so Ben will be back, and uh, honest, I want to see one before the season ends with just you and Ben. Me and Ben? Yeah, let me sit on this. I want, just want to see how it goes, you know? Like, okay. it's it's season one of this. This is, what, episode seven? I think we were shooting for, like, ten. I don't know why we're calling it season one, because we'll probably just start up season two the next week after. Yeah. But, you know, it's... 
I I mean, 18 views is better than eight, which is better than six, which is not as good as like 45 yeah. right in the first week. But uh, yeah, so he'll be back. Lots to talk about, hopefully. How? I thought this was pretty well with you in for the first yeah. week. I don't think I did that best. No, I think this was great. I mean, the intro, you guys won't hear it because we cut it out, but we tried to record the intro the first time and we ended up like spilling water in a computer and now part of my carpet's wet and it just went really poorly. <laughs> And then this was the second time. Usually we try and like cut stuff out as little as possible, which is why you'll probably hear me swearing way way too much in this. But yeah, so it was our first real fuck up in terms of recording. And uh, yeah, hopefully this was a one off. I mean, not a one off for you, but a one off for yeah. me. Uh, and yeah, we'll be back. We got it. I really want. I think at some point we gotta get another mic yeah, and just man? do a three man. Yeah. Cause that'll be. Oh, it's so much better. That. Yeah. Every good sports talk show I hear. Has a three man yeah. TSN, oh beautiful, and and we gotta co- I swear to God come up with some good segment or something that we do every once in a while, cause I know nobody gives a shit that like Slovakia beat Kazakhstan, <laughs> aside from the Slovaks and people in Kazakhstan who won't listen to this. They can get a, a podcast game show going or something. Game yeah or like, like a like a fake not betting for money but like betting on I don't know something. Yeah. But. <laughs> And, like, when the summer comes around and baseball, that'll be really good. Then we can all get really pissed if, like, you know, Baraki gives up five home runs in two okay. innings and the Jays are, like, 0-16 to start. Yeah, once the baseball season starts, this, episode, uh, this podcast going to well, light up a little bit. Yeah, so spring training, so I'm sure, I, well, I've told you this, but pe- for those who are listening, but no. So we're going to try and do one. Me and Ben are going to Florida over March break. We're bringing these. We're bringing one at least. And we're going to try and... I don't know, get get on a call or something. We were going to try and get Ben on a call today, but I don't think he was really had much interest, and we didn't really think it through too much. And uh, I, he's going to a hockey game either today or tomorrow or whatever. Ah, uh, yeah. So, I mean, good one week. I think you were pretty good, and I thought you were very good in this. Better than me, because <laughs> I don't stutter a lot. But, uh, yeah, we got to have a three-man at some point. Maybe that's uh, gotta have a season two or something. Great threesome at some point. Okay. I shouldn't have said that. All right. Anyway, so that about wraps it up for this one. Thank you very much for listening. If you like it, if you like this a lot, you might subscribe. Or if you just like it a little bit, you might just like it. Or hell, you might not listen to it at all, which is probably for your best because nobody won't wants get a to waste copyright an hour. Strike either. No copyright. Yeah, so we had a copyright strike. Last thing I promised, then we'll cut it off because it's too long. We had a copyright strike, it was like two weeks, one week ago. Yep. We used the same intro and outro music, but they copied just the outro music, copyrighted just the outro music. And because we're three idiots, we don't want to spend the time, like, fighting this. Yep. So we just switched the music well, to, like, Christmas what, like stuff. four subscribers or something? Six. Six. We got six. Get it right. I wonder how many of them are actually <laughs> bots. bots. Russian Five bots. bots, and one's me. And, <laughs> and a Russian sex bot. And a Russian sex bot, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that was just so stupid. You're, you're trying to, like, screw up a sports podcast with three grade 12 students like it's about finding on. loopholes and trying to find profit wherever you can yeah, good to make money good to make money shut the fuck up yeah. let us be if we get caught what if we get copyrighted for this one then i'll be really pissed then we'll hear about it in the next one luckily for us you have to deal with all this because you're the tech guy yeah so anyways that's it for this one we'll talk to you next time <laughs>